right, here we go. Podcast time. Glenn Power, PowerWorks Garage, PowerWorks Automotive. What is it? PowerWorks Automotive? PowerWorks Garage? Trade license logo, two different things. PowerWorks Automotive Repair what, is trade what, license. What do you like? PowerWorks Garage is the preferred name, being English. Power Glenn Works Power, Garage. PowerWorks Garage is there here. We go. <laughs> yeah, there we go. I mean, what we could do, we could get like a WWF style entrance. Yeah. Sort of like pyro, everything uh, I, coming I, through I, the know, door. Oh, I, I, yeah, I'm, I'm totally into that. Yeah. I'm 100% yeah. into Start that. Start shooting some like vignettes and stuff. Okay. Yeah. Well, you know, yeah. A Thursday, and so I'm dating myself here. So just ignore that. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a Thursday every week. Yeah. Alex from Alex House of Social is going to be at the 74th Creative Mornings event. And she, uh, she's been known to get onto the metro here in Dubai in, in a unicorn suit and just dance. She just dances a lot anyway. Why not? Yeah. And just, you know, so I, I'm, I'm totally for confetti cannons and, you know, flames and smoke and bullhorns. Oh, my, my son's graduating. And so this is, this is like a huge moment in our lives as a family because both of my children are now done school and neither of them are, are saying, you know, maybe a master's or a PhD. Neither of them are going down that so it's route. like just peeling the leech off. Yeah, exactly. It's two, like, I'm too leech. <laughs> So the gravy train has <laughs> left the station. So no, I'm really happy about that. And 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 so my wife said, "Well, we're we're going for that graduation." She said, uh, "What's the plan? You're going to get a blowhorn?" I said, "Nope, I'm taking a cowbell." Yes, because <laughs> yes. because a blowhorn, they might have you know things checking that a cowbell. There, I can I can disperse yeah, anyway. the, the hammer and the thing. What's oh, that? So it's, put it on my bag with a, a a carabiner, and it's just well, it's a cup. <laughs> Amazing. So I'm going to take the cowbell. When he gets up on the stage, he's going to start hammering away. Woo! <laughs> I used to love that. 100%. You're going to be a really popular dad after that one. But yeah, Well, you, uh, hopefully there's video of this. Oh, there will be video. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. There will there will be video. Yeah. I mean, what, what would you have to do to get security to try and get you to calm down? Probably get out of cowbell and start wailing on it. That's what we need. That's what we need. We need security involved. I'm going to have my short shorts on. I'm going to have my yes. trainers on because in case I have to run, uh, I'm going to be in the, I'm going to be ready. And uh, I'm going to spec out the security before we get there just to see which, uh, which way they're going to come from. Look, I think you need to find one of the security guys that looks, you know, a little bit battered. Looks like he's got kids basically. Yeah. And say, look, I want to do this to embarrass my sons. Are you in? Of course they're going to be in. And then they're in. I'm alumni too. I'm alumni well, of this place. I, I think that that should get me like a front row seat. You might have to turn the, uh, <laughs> the the degrees out. It, you know, it would be that would be fantastic if uh, if I could get the regalia. You know, and like I didn't get my PhD at this this school, but I I did get my BA. Coming back with a PhD from another institution, be up on the stage, and you know, given given my son is oh that would. Yeah, that would be. Then you could like have a fake one, set fire to it in front of him. <laughs> oh man, I'm really sorry. I don't know what's happened there. The whole show. Oh man. So the the interesting thing is, Canada is in a glut, and I suppose we have a little bit of it here. Rental cars, forget it. Like it, mm. they're they're calling this, you know, it's it's rental car Armar- Armageddon. There are not rental cars to be had. I'm just going to send a quick message to Amy that you've reminded me if I don't do it now. Just <laughs> yeah, saying do that, rental do that. car because we were supposed to pay our deposit yesterday. There we go. There we go. You see that? On the spot. This is this is not only a program where you get great ideas. This is mm. a reminder program. But no, you got to do that. For us. For us. <laughs> reminds you to get your car looked at. Reminds me to solve my domestic issues. Oh, man. So so we, we're, we're back on Turo which is great. So we've yeah. actually got a, and, and it, for those of you who don't know, T-U-R-O, they, they don't operate everywhere, but they operate in many countries and it's the Airbnb model for cars. So we've got, unfortunately, we one of the legs. So the, the, the first, we, multiple legs, multiple vehicles, because they're, they weren't available. We've got the, the Golf R, for our first leg, this for the graduation. So I'm nice. really looking forward to that. A 2018 model, so it's, yes. it's broken in. I don't think it's, I think it's still automatic, which I, I'm. The SG, it's fine. Yeah, so. It won't be an automatic. The so, SG, it'll be fine. So I'm looking forward to that. And uh, the other vehicle that, uh, you know, it's an unfortunate one. Further down the line, we've got a, a Renegade 
Jeep Renegade, which is, but it's you yellow. Need it, you need it those the other way around. Yeah, but it's yellow. So yeah, right. uh, I said the color works. But the cool thing is how we're getting that vehicle. And this is what I, what I kind of love about the Turo concept. So Turo works off an app. Go on the app. You put in all your details. You put in your license. The, the folks always want to check things as well, which is fine. I don't have a problem with that. Insured through the app as well. It's all legit. We've done it over and over again. So this car, how do we pick it up? This is the Renegade. It's a lockbox. I go, what? And we're picking it up at the airport. So they're going to drive it to the airport, put it in the parking, leave the the ticket to get out in the car, lockbox on the window, send you the combination, you open it up, you pay for the, you know, the to get it out. And then when you drop oh. it off, you just do the reverse. You you, you know, you drop it in, you put the parking ticket inside, you put the lockbox on oh, the window. Oh, good as long as they don't park it up like four days early because they got the wrong day. Yeah, no, they're, they're $5, really... $5,000 airport parking. Well, <laughs> it's, so it's like Airbnb. You'd be firing comments onto that, and they want to have, you know, you want to be a five-star host. Yeah. So, no, apparently it's pretty good. Now, the, the beauty of this car as well that I really loved is they have fuel tank refill options, and everyone might have that or might not have that. This guy... So the Renegade obviously doesn't have a huge gas tank. $35, bring it back at any level. And I'm going, well, that's a good deal. <laughs> I'm going to drive it till it's on fumes. Yeah, but, yeah. but $35, that's, I, I don't know if I can fill it at $4 no, a gallon. No, definitely not. I'm thinking, okay, if it, you know, maybe it's a really small it's tank. It's got to be bigger than a 50-liter tank. So I'm thinking. It's be. So even worst case scenario, that's still, I'm, I'm still thinking then I don't have to worry about finding a gas station, topping it up because that's always. And by the time it comes to filling it up, the fuel will have increased to another 10% anyway. Yeah, so. yeah. So. Yeah, it's cool. So yeah. So Turo's been nice to us and like I said, I'm looking forward to the Golf. Looking forward. Yeah, this Renegade will be fun at you. Golf is great. Yeah. I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. And then we're, we're looking at a number of different vehicles. We've got one last leg that we haven't actually done the final booking for. And, and the wife, actually, because usually I'm the one who's looking at all sorts of things. She's going, what do you think about a Cadillac? I'm going, <laughs> you're asking? Well, <laughs> she says it's all electric. And, you know, she's going, it's, and I'm going, what year is this? Because she's, I'm, I'm looking at the picture. I'm going, she, I'm going, no, no, no. That means all electric windows is a, it's not an all electric car. It's, it's, it's too old, but I'll tell you, she goes, that's going to be a gas guzzler. I said, I said, it's going to have the, it's, the, a, it's, the a Cadillac. it's a caddy and it's going to have the cylinder reduction system built into it at that point. So, and I, I mean, we're not going to be driving it like we're trying to, you know, win a race. He says, you know, I drive slow. This is going to be a great car. I said, it's a Cadillac, all black. What model was it? <laughs> um, I don't know. <laughs> Just a Cadillac. It's just a Cadillac. I don't know, CTS or C, okay, yeah, yeah, one of those things. Yeah. She said, it looks really big. And I'm going, yeah. I said, it? it's not a Fleetwood, but, you know, I'm okay with that. <laughs> Shame it's not a 60s one. Well, that's what I was Inspired hoping. by the uh, space I, program. Yeah. And and so what was the other, then she also came up with an Alfa Romeo. Oh, I went, no. And I went, I don't own we it. want to get somewhere. <laughs> I, said, I don't own it, but I'm going, yeah, I don't we know. We want to get to where we're going. going. I said, no, we want a Caddy. Yeah, it, 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 we want a Cadillac. Everyone wants to drive a Cadillac. I mean, the Alpha would have been better on fuel because yeah. it wouldn't have started. <laughs> so you wouldn't have had to worry about the fuel issue, would you? But the Uber would have been a nightmare. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. yeah. No, they, we looked at Churro last Christmas. I was doing my forced quarantine, yeah. and um, it was okay in the UK. Yeah. They, they, they were, we're quite rural where we live. Okay. So most of the things is big cities. Yeah. But, you know, it's doable on the trains and stuff. We're sort of 20 yeah. minutes taxi away from a train. So okay. you could have done it. We could have done it. And I think it's going to get more popular oh, now. I... COVID's, although, you know, we've got monkeypox now. But now COVID's out of the way. I think people are back to being yeah. a bit more happy with. And when I say out of the way, I mean people just don't care. The yeah. People are just more happy to shake hands and kiss, cuddle, and share cars again, which is well, kind of a change from 18 months ago, obviously. Look, it's it's not like you're just rocking up to someone's house and it's in their driveway when we're talking Turo. Turo.com, by the way. Uh, we're not sponsored by the program. Not but yet, hey, if, not if, yet. You know what? <laughs> and I'm, I'm really keen to put some sponsorship in here. So if anyone wants to jump in, if you've got a question and you want to you know, get a, you know, a nice mention here, uh, we're, we're pleased to do that for you, shamelessly. Yeah. Uh, but Turo, Turo.com, make your life easier. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know actually next, what they're <laughs> tuning next week for the jingle. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Get you, it's Turo. Get your son working on that one. <laughs> I've been trying, man. Oh. <laughs> he had a story about a uh, famous singer 
who I will not mention their okay. name, and I'm not even going to hint at it, famous singer who was uh, visiting wherever he was working, and uh, 32 point turn to get out of the parking nice. lot. And I said, what? He goes, of course, like all of the engineers are at the door watching him we'll do this. And I'm just going, that's really nice. Like, that's really nice. Like, how do you go and <laughs> offer a celebrity help? Yeah, well, that's kind it. Of embarrassing. He said, and then the guy waved at him. So you just get, then the guy waved at him as he was leaving. But 32 point turn, he said, I, I, it's, it's but not a good driver. <laughs> I helped a guy trying to get his truck out. One of the um, refrigeration trucks. Oh, no. We've got a, frozen food storage next to our yeah. couple of doors down actually from the garage in Alcuse and he's like sat there outside the garage just on the horn all like 20 minutes have gone by and he's still on the horn not moving I was like I went out what are you doing yeah. oh I can't get by this guy won't move I went the guy won't move because there's no one in the van <laughs> I can get around there I'm not driving a bus no 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 no. I don't want to catch it I went I'll do it yeah. and he was a bit reluctant I was just like I'll do it just let, let me in. I can't listen to this noise. Yeah. And then the worst part about it was I get out, get past it, and get round for him. The guy who's left his van, not really in the way. This guy's yeah, just been overly yeah. cautious. Yeah. Fair enough. The keys were in it. The door was open. <laughs> so then one of our lads just got in it and reversed it and parked it in a more reasonable spot. And I, I was love like, it. Oh. I love it. I absolutely. So, love yeah. It. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, that's good fun. Uh, what did I see today? Uh, this morning, I'm out walking the dog, and I see someone's got his Nissan Patrol. Nice, well, you know, basically he's got the wrong tires on it. You know, those nice sand tires like yeah. a tractor. And I'm I'm looking at the thing, and what caught my eye was the number of uh, uh, belts hanging down. <laughs> belts. <laughs> That's what I said. I had to take a second look, but, you know, I had the dog, and we were kind of moving. But I'm going, there. there's two belts hanging down. One of them was clearly a fan belt. I don't know what the other one was, but there were two belts Hang nice. it down from underneath. So I thought, you know, that, that's somebody's doing some work on the drive. Yeah. So I did. It, I think they. I think they were out duning, and it got dropped off of off of a tow truck. And now they're trying to figure out what to do because, yeah, it's not in good shape. I need to go to a garage fast. Yes. Yeah. Fast. I mean, we, we DJ had to change his um, electric fan yesterday for his radiator because oh, it's no. not working. Uh -oh. he, he's noticed. He noticed it because. The AC would cut off in traffic. There we go. And that's and that's um, an important one for people to remember. I had a Hyundai that did that. Yeah. A Hyundai Galloper, actually. We'd be in traffic. It was a knife, and I'm sitting there in traffic, and suddenly the AC's gone. It's like, oh, we got a problem. Well, there you go. That's yeah, it's always the first warning sign of an overheating engine that if you've got AC, it tends to be the first thing you'll notice because the, the condenser just gets so hot, the mm -hmm. pressure goes so high that the AC can't work, and it cuts off. And that's the first sign. So put, put that on your checklist because there's a lot of people having issues right now. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's absolutely disgusting out there. <laughs> I was down, so my daughter does the um, pirate surf rescue thing okay. on the beach. Yeah, yeah. And they've started, they always uh -oh. did it on Kite Beach, and now they've yeah. started doing one on the Palm. Okay. Um, Wait, we've where, been on, the, where on the Palm? Uh, so they they have got a partnership with a with a bar, okay, like a beach bar. But for the moment, for the Smart. Last, Smart. Couple, last couple of months, we've been doing it on the Atlantis Beach. Okay. Nice. And I pick her up. From school, she does a, a late finish. I pick her up and take her straight there, and I'm in my work clothes, absolutely saturated and disgusting. And oh boy. all I was thinking about, we were in a queue to get in the car park, queue to get out of the car park, and I'm thinking, oh, man, please don't go off AC. Please don't go off AC. Please don't go. No reason to think it would, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, what yeah. A, it would have been the worst time for it to have happened. It was so hot and bothered, and it was so humid. Like the windscreen, sat in traffic, and the windscreen steaming up, and you can't, clear it quickly enough put your wipe, wipers on and they just start juddering across the screen oh man use a full bottle of screen wash to get rid of the streaks but it's just the way it's going to be for the next few months Gotta yeah. deal with it yeah we're there another two weeks i figure we'll have full humidity because my weather trees have lost all of their leaves now <laughs> and they've grown them all back which means two weeks a bit early this year for me, the it, humidity. I don't well, remember the humidity in May before. Not I, like this. I think you're right. I think the humidity is a little early, but the temperature has been a little late. Yeah, temperature is not too bad. So it's we, just humidity. So it's it's kicking in though. Yeah, it's, but it, that's 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 one of the things you don't realize. Obviously, with the humidity, your AC does a heck of a lot of oh. work, and the humidity condenses on the evaporator and then drips out under the car. Right. If you don't keep that drain clean, it builds up and floods the inside of the car. If you don't keep your filters changed, all that condensation sticks to all the dust in there, 
and it makes a massive, massive problem. It goes gungy and slimy, yeah. and it's just a perfect place for bacteria to grow. Get your stuff checked. Get this yeah. whole. Get your system checked. Get it. Get a look at it. I'm really happy, actually. The Wrangler. You see, I'm driving. Uh, I'm driving the goat. So we got two. We got the uh, yellow one, and we've got the goat. The old Rumor goat has it because you can't deal with the windows <laughs> out of the yellow one. Uh, no, no. Ah. I, I, the rumor, the the real reason I'm driving the goat, is because I don't have to go into the university today, so I drop my wife. So we're oh, we're cool. trying to conserve fuel well, costs, save the planet. <laughs> because well, no, save no. the planet, yeah, but also conserve <laughs> the fuel costs because I, I hate to say it, at 250 dirhams to fill up the fill up the jeep. And and we all know that they're not aerodynamic, so they're they are anything but fuel efficient. Probably better than a Nissan Patrol, but still not fuel efficient. Yeah. And and so I just don't want to be spending you know extraordinary amounts. So one of them sitting at home, but the, my wife said I think it's time to put the windows in. I said I got to get to fifty this Probably year. Got to fifty, I'm got going to 49. for forty-nine. Yeah, I'm going to I'm going for fifty. So it's I've only it's only hit forty-three. So mm. I so it'll it'll we'll wait till the real humidity kicks in. Oh yeah, yeah. I got a little bit more time. Yeah, yeah. yeah I mean it's it's. That's like a rite of passage. Yeah. That, I've all, I got to 49 last year, and then I don't know what happened. Oh, global warming let you down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so if everybody could please go and drive the Pajeros around a bit more so we can get the temperature a bit higher so James can achieve his, his challenge, that'd be great. Oh, man. So the, the, the point is, though, I'm in the old goat, and so that's a, a 2008 Wrangler Sahara four-door, and I guess the Sahara is only our four-door. Anyway, the air conditioning's working so well, but I'm using it obviously for the dehumidifying effect yeah. uh, as well. But it's working so well. I've had to adjust several times now, just push the old thermostat up a little bit so it's not on full cold, which is yeah. unheard of really. And and uh yeah, so I'm really happy with that because yeah, anytime something's working so well, that's a good thing. Yeah, we've got the Tuareg set to low. The the yeah. AC isn't the best on on that generation of VW stuff they they struggle to get the the airflow powerful enough if you yeah, like yeah we got it on on low we don't like to have it on the lowest of the low setting because the AC compressor never kicks out right so we have it on like 16 I think is the one yeah 16 but the other night driving around it's not needed so yeah. we just turn the temperature up a little bit and then I'm like <laughs> <sighs> oh, so the heater core is leaking oh no so dashboard out, so that'll be a summer project, I think. Uh, do that one in the driveway, or are you going to do it at the shop? In the garage, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'll do it in the garage. I've got to get that done. Um, I thought about just looping it round, but the S6 is like that at the minute. Right. So I don't want to take the dashboard out of that. Yeah. And it's too cold in the winter, way yeah. too cold. You need some temperature, especially with leather seats, and the fact that it's really dark windows, it doesn't absorb much heat. It's got the AC fan blowing all the time from the solar panel when it's left in the sun so it never gets really really hot in there so yeah we need to get that done on that one but the Tuareg is a lot easier to do so yeah and the family use it so it needs to get done the the one of the i think it's it's good to fire a little warning out for people about car washes <laughs> and this is just keep in mind when you're going into these car washes and i i say this only because i i had some sensor failures about a month ago mm. on on the old goat actually and it was to the point where it was like, yeah, we got to take this into the garage. And then it stopped. Mm. And But the sensor failures happened after a car wash. And the nearest that I can figure is wherever the sensor is got wet, got, you know, or multiple wetness, and then multiple things triggered with it. I, I, and I, I was watching, so, so just beware of, of where you do, how you're getting your car washed. And the reason I say that is sometimes you get it, people are pressure washing underneath the vehicle. They're, they're, you know, just, just taking Without everything. Prejudice, off. just blasting everything. Just blasting. Yeah, yeah. But the vehicles tend to be running also. <laughs> I've seen a lot of these where the vehicle, they just leave the vehicles running because, mm. you know, they do. So it's hot. You've got your exhaust is, you know, easily going to get water in it if you, if they fire the right way. And, and, and you know, who knows what's going on. Beware that you can cause serious damage to your car. Yeah, yeah. Inside and out. We've we've got a, a GL five hundred, and it's just to mention what kind of car it is. It's not that it's particularly common on these cars or anything, but it it's totally well. It's a bad. It's a case of bad luck for the people responsible for yeah. it. Um, they they did a, an interior clean and valet, oh. and then the AC blower stopped working in the front. Yeah. Now on these cars, there's a connector at the back of the, uh, sorry, in the front of the car, 
behind the carpet in the footwell on the passenger side. And they've obviously given it a really good scrub and clean. Yep. And then the one thing I can say about these cars is that the, the blower motor, and it's not just these, I've seen it on others, but I've seen it on this particular model. The blower motors and the resistors tend to get a lot of use. Uh, obviously, we're in a hot country. And the wiring gets very hot. The block connector melts. What? So well, then, hold on, hold on, hold on. The block connector yeah, yeah. inside so the So the wiring thing? gets really, really hot. Yeah. So this, there's a connector that's in the footwell okay. on the bottom of the A-pillar. And that connector gets very hot. The plastic starts to melt. The wires start to go brown. So it's connected. They're pushed yeah, together. Yeah, yeah. A little bit of a... Someone gets in and kicks that panel, or in this case, somebody's been in there and wet back and then given it a scrub. They've disturbed it. Now the AC won't work. The blower doesn't work on the front. It's nice. Get a fault stored in the memory saying missing message from um, blower resistor, something like that. I can't remember the exact wording. And then you go straight to it because we've seen it before. But I would imagine there are people that would have just changed the blower motor, that have changed the resistor. Oh, yeah, for sure. Just, you for know, sure. Because it's so common on other cars. You just change it. It's easy. So, you know, and it's... It's, it's it's unlucky. These guys are valeting cars. They're not yeah. claiming to be, nor should we expect them to be mechanics or electricians. They're not. But it's very hard from a customer's point of view to accept, well, no, it was working. You've been in my car. Now it's not working. It's really bad luck on everybody's part, and, yeah. and it's just one of those. We try to deal with it in the case of, well, this is probably how it's happened, but it's nobody's fault. Right. It could have happened a week later when the kids got in the front. Or you threw something onto the seat and it fell off and hit the same area, you know, yeah, when you break. Yeah. So these things do happen. So that that's, and again, it's, it happens on the most humid day and <laughs> hottest day we've had for ages. Yeah. It's just how it is. Yeah. And and then instantly your mind starts thinking, the compressor? Is this a compressor issue? Yeah, or is yeah. this, you know, ah, oh, and, and everyone knows that, we're, that you're looking at a few thousand dirhams at that point, so. Yeah, I mean, the, the blow motor resistor will be easily 2K. <laughs> yeah, easily. 2K. That's just to buy the parts, yeah. Oh. Yeah. Easily. I mean, the resistor isn't... The resistor in the old days used to literally be four coils of wire that yeah, were thicker yeah. than thinner, thinner well, as they yeah, went down. Yeah, easy. Not now. Computer now. Oh, man. So, yeah, they're, they're probably more processing capacity in one of those than there was on the Challenger or something, I would guess. It's just, you know, crazy <laughs> to think, but it, it probably is. Well, the, the Apollo spacecrafts, they're thinking it's... <laughs> few switches there oh yeah yeah they're, i i still have a lot of manual know, input there's yeah. there's more there's more technology in a texas instruments calculator than was in those capsules so, yeah. so i mean there's 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 no way the, the, an everyday person could understand that issue right this is a this is a you know that big reminder you're going to get your car cleaned and get it detailed get Make sure you're getting it done by someone who knows what they're doing. And, and there's lots of places that have really great prices and they've got a nice slick sign, but do they really know what they're doing or are they going to cause more harm than good? And yeah, I, sometimes, you know, there's, there's, a, there's a difference that you have to draw between people that are genuinely trying to do a good job and being unlucky, which I think in this case is, is the case. It was just unlucky. I, I, I don't think, yeah. I mean, if your job is detailing and validating cars, whichever word you want to use if, if that's your job then you're tasked with cleaning the carpet bringing it back right. to life making sure it yeah. doesn't smell you know make sure when it goes back to the customer it's dry same with the seat same with the dashboard all this now okay you're going to be careful with the switch gear on the dashboard especially yeah. on a car a few years old you're going to be careful with the screen that you don't use the wrong cloth and damage it scratch it whatever you're going to do careful with the leather use the right material yeah. carpet's a carpet yeah. Car carpets are hardy. They're hard wearing. Unless you're talking about a shag pile in a Rolls Royce, <laughs> it's a hardy, it's hard just wearing. That, it's just that pressure washer when they get in there. Well, this is the, this is one it's of like, the things. Put some plastic up. You got You know, you want so someone this, who's going to do the extra. This is the one that I've never liked. Is when they open the door, get the pressure washer with the directed, yep, sort of jet on it, and they'll do the in, the hinges and the door shut and the door jam. And I don't like it. There's no reason to do that. Yeah. There's no reason to do that. You can do that with you'll save countless problems and it's five minutes to do it with a cloth. Yeah. You know, a wet cloth. They're not that dirty in there anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Five minutes. You know, and the, the blasting the grease out of the check strap and the hinges on the doors, which is a massive issue. They'll start to knock and clunk and 
that's that's that is an expensive repair when you start yeah. talking about sorting hinges out. And then you've also got the fact that if somebody's got to replace a hinge on the on the door, that's not a hinge on the door in the house. Yeah. You know, that's yeah, yeah. door off. Yeah. Then put it back on. You've got to paint them. You've then got to adjust it all up and then you've got to repaint it because well you don't have to, but if you're doing the job right, where you put the tools on the nut or the bolt, whichever way around it is, you're gonna rip the paint off. Right. You can't get in with anything soft or anything. You're going on with. You're getting in with a spanner. Yeah. So you're gonna rip the paint. Off. And you're gonna see that so, every time you open the door. It's like, yeah. Oh, look so at that. then you've got to repaint it. So it's getting painted twice. It's getting adjusted for. That can take an hour or two. We don't, yeah. It's taken me and DJ hours to adjust panels on cars when we've had shells off cars. Days. Yeah. You know, a full day once doing a. a although, although fair enough, that was an Austin Ely, and it was the most ridiculous <laughs> idea I've ever seen. But. You know, these things do happen. And that pressure washer blows all of the grease out, mm. every single bit. And it's the same when people pressure wash their the wheels. Getting the, getting the wheels clean is much better when the wheels are off. You yeah. see pressure washing your brakes, and they're blowing yeah. all the grease out of the brakes. We need, we need to get Richard. Richard Bilo out of Calgary, my cousin, who is who is the, the valet slash detail guy. Get him on the line. Did, did, actually, yeah. did you see that, that image I sent yeah. you of his... I, I was I thinking rock. DJ. I was thinking DJ. And he's got his eye rock. It's like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He's you know, and yeah. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. It's a nice looking eye rock. Yeah, I think I think you know, he's got no excuse, has he? He makes yeah. people's. He makes everyone else's car look nice. He's got to have one himself. Yeah, exactly. I thought, wow, what a nice ride. Mm. I haven't seen Richard in a while, but I'm, I'm thinking I got to go and visit him just to get so a walk. Bit, you can get one of the chiller cars and take it in. <laughs> Speaking of that, Joey Woo Woo went up to Cochrane, Ontario, and I, he sends a video. Can we say that? Yeah. All oh, right. It's, 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 it's a place. Oh, okay. uh, Jason Michaud, the Mosquito, who we've got a podcast up if you want to go listen to that. He's in the space industry. So they go up to, they're setting up this whole space learning center, and they're doing some STEM with rockets and stuff up there. And Joey Woo Woo is driving his, I think, I, you know, he's got a gym. What's he doing? He's got a Silverado or? Could be. He's driving this thing across a clear-cut mud field. And uh, good V8. Clearly, he's got it in four-wheel, and he's giving her because you can just see the way it's bouncing. Like, this thing is <laughs> four-wheel spinning at one point. Well, got to keep going. You've got momentum. <laughs> but, but, you know, Joey Wu is kind of a fanatic for cleanliness. And, you know, the Buick Regal that I got grass underneath on the differential for driving it across a field years gone by with... My girlfriend. I would say that was date night, though, wasn't it? it well, so. it was with girlfriend, now wife. Yeah. And, you know, I, I give him back the car, and he says, uh, brother, got a question for you. I put the thing up on the, the lift as I was cleaning the underside of it, just because that's what you do, and there's quite a bit of grass. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta so do what you gotta do. so I, I was curious how he was going to deal with this rather dirt-caked Silverado that has uh, been doing some mutter. Fun. Yeah, I mean, shout out to Nick Rago. I used to work with at VW in the UK, who made his um, firstborn child when he must have been no older than two or three eat a pastry. I believe it was a cheese straw um, in the rain, oh. cold and wet, oh. before he could get in his car. <laughs> he had an old, well, he called it by its Nissan name, it was a Ford Maverick. <laughs> <laughs> but he called it by its Nissan name because he wouldn't have that he had a Ford. But he wouldn't let wouldn't let his kids in it eating pastry. He had to stand in the rain and wind. <laughs> and a nice winter's day. <laughs> Same man actually. We called him one Saturday to see if he was coming for a beer. And his wife answered the house phone. He never used to answer his mobile to us. And his wife answered the house phone and said, "Oh, hang on, he's just out in the garage, Hoover in it, <laughs> back in the garage." <laughs> Still give him some for that actually. It sounds like oh. Joey Woo Woo. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he was. Uh, he was always one to get with stuff like that. I mean, I like being clean and tidy, and yeah. I think most most mechanics do. But yeah. he worked next to um, my best mate Mark, who was the least clean and tidy mechanic oh. in the world. Like, if there was a job that nobody had done before, like a new model, and it's like, oh, how are we going to do this? Let Mark do it because he won't mind. He won't mind his arms getting stuck behind something and cutting his fingers <laughs> off and everything being dirty because you don't know what you're doing and you're just getting stuck in. So let Mark do it. And he worked next to Nick 
So that was always oh. fun. Then everybody had deliberately walked through Mark's mess and trample it onto Nick's ramp. And Nick was foreman <laughs> as well, workshop controller. So you had to go and see him on every completion and start of a job. So, yeah. Yeah, love it. Yeah, shout out to Nick Rag. Mm. Okay, we, we I want to I want to jump into one of these points here. Yeah, shout out to Nick Rag. That's awesome. Fuel prices. We alluded to this at the start. Fuel prices are going up everywhere. Yeah, and this is this is leading folks to now start thinking. Okay, maybe it is time to downsize. But it's also getting folks asking those questions. Okay, what can I do to save a few liters here and there? And you know, part of it is. It's not like, I, I mean, in my mind, I'm firing this up to you as the mechanic. It's not like any of the tricks and tips that I'm hearing are really going to give me substantial savings. No. If my vehicle's a gas guzzler, it's going to be a gas guzzler. If it's a, a quite a miser on fuel, it's going to be a miser on fuel. But people seem to be going out of their way to now try and save, you know, a Durham, a buck, a pound at the pumps. Yeah. And I, I mean, mean it's, it's, it, it, there was a, and there's, there's, there's probably 5 million videos on YouTube of people <laughs> doing these sort of road tests trying to increase their fuel economy. Yeah. And I remember watching one on a TV show in the UK called Fifth Gear, which was like Top Gear, but rubbish. <laughs> and they got a car and they took all the weight out of it as right. much as they could. And it saved 100 odd kilos. Yeah. It wasn't a particularly heavy car. They put the tire pressures a little bit higher than they should have been. They did this, they did that. And, you know, they, they used engine braking rather than foot brake. And uh, as much, you know, all the, yeah, yeah, yeah. all the stuff that you've heard. And I, I, I seem to think that going around like a test track, which I think it was just an oval, they didn't actually save anything. They didn't yeah. improve anything really. And well, you know, part of it is, I think back in the day, so we'll go back 20, 25 years. I think, there were things you could do to cars and trucks and vans that would help with your fuel economy. Now with everything being so computer run and the computer constantly doing that mix and constantly looking for the optimal consumption, yeah. it's making a whole bunch of changes as it goes and it's getting used to your driving patterns and it's trying to save you some cash. Yeah. I mean, one of the big things undoubtedly is the, electronically controlled manual gearboxes, so the SG from the VW group, S-Tronic PDK, whichever way you call it, there's completely different to an automatic. Mm. They aren't as heavy. They don't need as much power to get turning. So that's a good thing. And they can be controlled. And most cars now will have a driving mode. Right. And you'll have an economy mode, sport mode, comfort mode, and a... Yeah, you know you can uh, a custom mode where you can set your own parameters. One of the things to say is that you will definitely benefit if you have a new car. If you buy two new cars built in the same factory by the same people side by side, and one of them gets serviced and one of them doesn't, the one that gets serviced will do better gas mileage. Okay. So <clears> keep <throat> so keep your vehicle serviced. Servicing is a massive trip, thing. Trip number one, but. By service, we're using that as an umbrella term, and, and what we're talking yeah. about there is not only taking it to the garage for the oil and filter change, but also every single week checking your tire pressures. So tire pressure, keep it at the optimum And then uh, that level. gets split down. So when you check your tire pressures, check your tread. Your tread. Does uh -oh. it look like it's wearing unevenly? Is it evenly worn? If it's not evenly worn, there's an issue with the wheel alignment. And so wheel alignment could also have an impact. So if okay. you can imagine trying to push a shopping trolley around a supermarket oh, and one yeah. of the wheels is bent. We've oh, all been there. We've been there. It takes, it's an absolute nightmare. Yeah. It takes a lot more energy to do it, and that's all you're talking about here, energy. You're just getting energy from petrol or diesel, whichever way you look at it. So keeping the tires checked every week for pressure means that you're also checking the tread, yeah. Yeah. and you're also down there having just driven to a petrol station or wherever it may be if you're checking them in your house it's a little bit different but if you've just driven somewhere and you get down there and you're putting the air in and you think that smells or your brake disc looks blue yeah your brakes are binding on that's okay. something so you might not necessarily know got another issue which is why so you want to go get a service so your mechanic exactly. can see so this there's another thing you might see checking yeah. your tires so these are all important things another hugely important thing to stress here is ac uses very very little fuel now really on modern, see, because I always think, oh, the AC's on. I am chugging away. On modern like European a... cars, there's a there's a very very minimal difference with the AC being on. 
as to not being on because the and, and also don't forget the worst part of that is the opposite of having the the, the solution to having no AC especially in a warm <laughs> day is to have the window down yeah. well that's ridiculous yeah. that's causing so much more drag and again there'll be videos on that driving with your windows down and windows up and seeing how far you get and that'll yeah. be that'll be the biggest difference mm. so keeping keeping the AC on when it's hot rather than open the window is a is a much better option and also, using the right fuel, mm-hmm. not thinking that you're going to get better power or economy because you're putting super fuel in, that, that's not necessarily the case. If your car requires it, then yes, it will. But if you're just driving around in a run-of-the-mill normal car that can take 91 or 93 or 95, whatever it may be, yeah. then just use normal fuel, fuel it up properly, try not to let it run completely out of fuel all the time. You know That's not a good thing. Don't buy these magnets that go around your fuel lines. I've never seen know, those. I don't know what they're for. You see them on Amazon all the time that save, make fuel economy. I think Fifth Gear tested those as well. You yeah. know, don't believe in any sort yeah. of quick fix. That the, the And again, like we've said, with modern cars, which we're talking about here, most manufacturers have done, because they've had to, to sell them everything they can to make them as, as efficient yeah. as they can for yeah. what they're putting in them. It's it's certainly the case for ninety five percent of European cars. They're they're as as efficient as they can be for the job they're trying to do. Mm. And ultimately downsize. Yeah. That's the other way to get a smaller vehicle. Just get a smaller smaller vehicle. Get a four cylinder. If you if you if you if you're worried about cost, if it if it's purely cost of the fuel rather than the actual environmental impact of the fuel that you're using if it's purely just the cost then my the only sensible advice is just to buy a smaller car Mm. failing that you can go and buy yourself an electric car there's Mm. an offering from every single manufacturer i would think now that you could go and buy Mm. and there are power storage with power generation units available now more and more widely if you look online you'll see them where you can get solar wind generators to power a storage bank or charge your car yeah. overnight and that's then totally clean clean and green and 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 you're not environmentally impacting anybody apart from the way that the car's been put together and the, yeah. where the batteries come from and the tires that you're using and the brakes that you're using but otherwise you, you're not doing a bad job at all what do you think about the you know turning off the ignition turning off the car at lights at stops so we sort of mentioned it the other week, and I stop or start, stop, stop, start, whichever way you call it, on cars now is mostly fitted to everything. I think yeah. I Porsche have it on GTS models. You know, it's it's on everything. If so, that so the 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 case study that we sort of based our training around or had as, as cited in our training when we did this system in in VW was. Our average engine size turned out to be a 1.6 for the range in the UK. And anything that was left, any engine that was left running for seven seconds of that size would use more fuel after seven seconds had it if it had been turned off. So if you're going to turn the car off when you come to a stop, if it stays off for longer than seven seconds, you've saved fuel. Because when you start it back up, you used a little bit of fuel to get it to start. But if it had been if it had been running for seven seconds, it would have used more. Okay. So there's that. Now one of the problems with this is they come with expensive batteries. These systems don't just use normal batteries; they're, oh. they're usually absorbent glass mat. Because starting the I didn't car, know that. I just thought it was just turn it off, turn it on. Starting a car with a liquid battery, starting a car makes the battery very hot. It uses a lot of power, forty, fifty amps typically, mm. and that makes the the, the battery acid hot and it starts to evaporate and it's very very difficult for that battery to hold the electrolyte in there because it's getting hot and it's evaporating out the breather so they're normally agm batteries now side by side they're double the price they tend to last longer and you if you've got start stop you've also got battery monitoring battery mm-hmm. monitoring means that it's constantly generating the right amount of power from the alternator for the battery depending on how it's being used so this adds extra weight to the car. Uh, um, I mean, weight doesn't make that much of a difference, but it does make sufficiently enough 
if you were to say, if you look at it from a manufacturer's point of view, they're not interested in an individual car. There's certain things they have to meet for the individual car, but if you can save 100, well, if you can save, let's say you can save 10 kilos, but you're producing 1 million of those cars, that's 10 million kilos less weight to move around. That's a lot of fuel. Yeah, yeah for sure. So as a manufacturer, that's their big picture that, people sometimes forget as an individual you don't really notice the difference you know it's put a suitcase in and drive to the airport forget your passport go back yeah. having left the suitcase at the <laughs> airport you're going to use the same amount of fuel yeah, yeah, you're going yeah. to be foot to the floor but you're going to use it's, it's not that noticeable to the individual but as a, as a as a big picture view than it is yeah. and that's where these things get broken down so you've got to also remember that with start stop there are other components involved in it. Now, Peugeot, and the, it's, it's, it's spread to other manufacturers, have did this weird thing where the alternator would turn backwards on itself to start the engine rather than use the starter motor again because it was less likely to fail and yeah. maybe it was and maybe it wasn't. I don't know. I try not to work on them, but the starter motors are a little bit more heavy duty and they are designed for this system, but... There's only so much space in an engine bay. There's only so much space on an engine. These systems are adapted to existing technology rather than technology and engines built for these systems. Yeah. So there's always going to be failure points. And in cities where you're stopping and starting all the time, people turn it off mm. because it's annoying. You set a set of traffic lights, creep into the lights for a kilometre. Every time you come to a complete stop, it turns off, but you need to move again. You release your phone. People turn it off. People always turn it off. And we've had customers that have been for a service and taken the car away and said, my car keeps cutting out. Mm-hmm. Because they've turned it off or yeah, they've yeah. not known because it was always off. And then, yeah. or we fixed the problem that was causing it not to work. And then they've, they like, what the hell is this? I don't want this. <laughs> so we'll press that button and it'll turn it off. Yeah. Uh, and those systems don't always work. So in a hot climate like ours, if you've got the AC on full, and the cabin temperature you've requested is as low as possible, but the vent, the interior temperature is being detected at 25, 30 degrees, it won't turn it off because it doesn't want the cabin to get too hot. And if you've also got that running, the batteries being uh, drained, you've got all your systems going in the car, you've got three phones plugged in on charge, you've got the radio (laughs) going, you've got, Kids in the back watching the screens. They're, they've they've got iPods plugged in on charge. You've it's also got the AC off. on. It, yeah. You know it's not going to work because it can't because it can't afford the battery to, yeah. to to drain. So they're not foolproof. They're not great, and they are a little bit um, invasive, I suppose, to your driving experience. And a lot of people do turn them off, but they do work, yeah. providing you stop for longer than the time it takes on on your engine, which. It uses more fuel to start a five-liter engine than it does to start a one-liter engine, obviously. But it also takes less time to make that up by turning that engine off. So, uh, I, as I say, I can know, I remember the figure for the one point six, but I can't remember what it was for for other engines. And if I was ever told, um, but that they they do work. Mm. All right. Glenn, you know what? I I think we've we've run out the clock on yet another edition of the power works podcast oh. a lot of fun oh, well yeah back to my back to my 900 messages now yeah. <laughs> as always you got like 900 <laughs> sitting there i've seen i've just seen your phone just just binging binging so i'll, I'll let you get back to the All garage news no, of course of course <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Glenn. Thank you. This has been the PowerWorks Podcast coming to you from the Rove Hotel, downtown Dubai's Epic Podcast Studio. And hey, you know what? Turo.com. <laughs> hey, guys. We're going in. We're all in. We, we, we want to be your podcast. And so, so get in touch. But thank you very much for listening. And go and take a listen to some of our other shows. There's, what, 105 of these episodes to keep you company. And we'll do it all again real soon. Thanks a lot. So long for now. 